Praise Kane. It's 2021, and Los Angeles lays in ashes. A follower of Set, who had long embedded herself in the Camarilla and Anarch movement alike, betrayed both sects to the Sabbat. The ensuing war wiped out most of Los Angeles' political infrastructure. Former Anarch Baron Tourette Vorman ceased praxis and pledged her loyalty to the Camarilla, letting she leading, she hopes, the survivors to victory. On the other side of the city, Baron Isaac Abrams, Smiling Jack, and Vivian Lewis see that Tourette's betrayal and swear revenge. In the middle of the Sabbat, ready to bring this city into the grace of Cain, Priscus Layla Monroe has called a crusade to accomplish that very goal and is currently in Los Angeles to supervise the mass embrace, which is their first step. Welcome to Starlight and Smoke, a Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition Sabbat Chronicle, premiering right here on Vorpal Tales. Along with this show, Vorpal Tales offers a bevy of other live plays to terrify and delight. If you're interested in horror, check out Forget Me Not, a Call of Cthulhu game running at 5 p.m. Eastern on Fridays, or Acid and Ice, an alien adventure at 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. We'll also be doing a special three-week event on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, which you might have already caught, feature featuring the Kickstarter active game Necrobiotic. And if adventure is more your jam, we have Fallout every Wednesday and Dune every Monday, both at 9 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to check out past shows over on our YouTube or the podcasts you can find where refined pods are casted. Tonight, we begin our journey into the Church of Cain and the deepest secrets the world of darkness holds not with blood and death. So that's coming. But with life, these brave players have all come up with mortal character concepts and told me their three favorite vampire clans. With a crusade in the offing and a shovel party imminent, who knows what they'll end up as. But it's a little heavy topic. We shift now to character creation. Currently undammed, players, tell us whose skin you'll be wearing tonight. Uh, hey, I'm Eric at Moron Recluse on Twitter, and uh, I will be playing Dimitri. Hey, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. And you can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever. Tonight, I shall be playing Billy, who is a femme-presenting non-binary person who goes by the pronouns they, them. Hello. Uh, I'm assuming I'm next from the awkward silence. Um, I'm Harry. I will be playing. Uh, I will be playing Justin. He is a watchmaker and a tinkerer, and just trying to get home after a long day's work. Oh boy. Hello. My name is Jared, and I will be playing Drew. He works with dead people, literally. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, pronouns he, him. Tonight, I am playing the Honorable Nora Cannon. Uh, pronouns she, her. I am Tyler, Elder Echoes Online, and in this story, I will be playing Hossum Moreno. My friends call me Sam. None of you are my friends. All right. Awesome. So... We're just going to jump into character creation because although everybody has a really cool concept, I can't wait. Uh, let's put some dots on sheets. Uh, same order, step one is uh, your general concept and then your nature and your demeanor. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was uh, trying to recap and uh, do the thing, thing at the same time. Uh, my nature is... Uh, right over here. My nature is Enigma, but my demeanor is Chameleon. Did I miss anything? Concept. Uh. That concept. Um, I see Dimitri as being very uh, nomadic, uh, so just kind of like... But specifically, like within the homeless community in LA, like that's the people he hangs out with and he lives on the streets. So just a homeless vampire nomad. But not also. quite a vampire yet. Not quite a vampire yet, correct. I will be sad if Dimitri doesn't have a Russian accent. You want <laughs> but just the course. concept or do you want the nature and demeanor too? I got lost. All three, please. Okay. 
For mine, uh, nature is scientist, demeanor is enigma, and my concept is a disabled, content loner. Hmm. Um, my nature is trickster, and my demeanor, I'm stuck between between architect and director. Or, uh... Well, so hmm. you can change demeanors pretty easily, because yeah. there's no real mechanical uh, thing attached to demeanor. It's just meant to guide roleplay. Oh, okay. Uh, then I will go with conniver. So, uh, my my nature and demeanor. Um, I don't know if there's one for prophetic. Where? Oh. Hmm. There's visionary. Thank you. That's what exactly what I was looking for. So yes, visionary. If I can change this. And then my demeanor, I think I'm going to go with Architect. Cool. And probably will change it. Okay. Um, so, I... I'm not sure on my nature. I'm going to see what Rachel thinks. But I think my nature is going to be Autocrat. Autocrat. Comports really well uh, okay. with what we've talked about. Okay. Uh, was there something else that you were thinking of that might also fit? Mm, none that I saw specifically, but I just wasn't sure if maybe you had, based on what we talked about, a good idea. Um, that was the one that jumped out to me the most, so I just wanted to make sure that flies. Uh, demeanor, definitely judge. Um, and the concept is a disgrace judge. Awesome. It's based on what we talked about. Say yes. my, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I cut you off? No, I just, I didn't say my concept. Oh, sorry. Um, what is your concept? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I, like I said, I literally work with dead people. I went to college to be a, uh, people that, I can't remember their names, but, uh, people that work with dead people at morgues and shit. Mortician? Thank you, mortician. Oh, yeah. I forgot to give my concept. <laughs> <laughs> My concept is essentially a tinkerer, a watchmaker who is constantly, kind of a perfectionist, constantly tinkering with his this one device, this one movement, to try and get it as perfect as possible. Hyper-focused watchmaker? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, my concept is spy, hitman, triple agent, mass murderer, holy warrior. That's all you need to know. Nature is sociopath, demeanor is soldier. That'll be fun. <laughs> okay. Next step. Uh, dots on sheet. Uh, right now, uh, all of you mortals start with a spread of 642. This is a little bit different than the normal 753 gonna hold those dots in reserve until you figure out a little bit more about your clans and your disciplines, and then you can assign them. So, with this, you don't necessarily have to say what all your dots are, just let me know when you're done, or if you have any questions. My attribute dots are done. Okay. Same. Physical, social, and mental, in that order? Uh, any order you want. Oh, um, many how many dots do we get for for the attributes if we're just doing human? Uh, same one. It is six four two. Okay. Hey, done. Can't go any path. Can we go past three, or can we go up to four? <laughs> uh, for attribute dots, you can go up to four. Go up to four. Okay. okay. <clears throat> yeah, my allergies are terrible. I feel <laughs> your pain. I agree. Literally. All done. Lungs. Pain. 
Okay. I'm at, right. just wanted to let you know, I am going to change my demeanor to creep shell. That fits the character. Okay. Hey. It probably... Okay. <laughs> Did you get your attribute dots, Jared? Yeah. Uh, six, four, two, correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, is that everyone? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Neat. That was very quick and efficient. You're all wonderful. All right. So, knowledges, skills, and talents, it's the same thing. Uh, it will be 1164 for the humans. Eleven six four. Interesting. Okay. Same thing. You have not yet come into yeah. your true vampiric potential. Okay. Hi. As you are aware, Jared, I am complete. Or Rachel, I am complete. Yes. Yes, ever. Did we do mine wrong? Years are full. Okay. Fine. It's not really going to hurt anything. Just subtract a couple dice from your pools when you're rolling before you get smacked on the head. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so... So, just pretend... Uh, that one skill on each of your rows is two instead of three. Or one instead of three. Pick any one and then you'll be good until you're a vampire. What's the difference between alertness and awareness? Uh, alertness is doing things like detecting ambushes. Uh, oh, there's someone following me. Oh, that person is about to jump out with a knife at me. And then awareness is knowing when there's spooky woo going on around you. Mm -hmm. Okay. What'd you say it was 11 sick the, for the abilities again? Uh, 11, 6, 4. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> 11, 6, 4. I think I'm done now. Cool. I think this is the most like balanced across the board character I've ever done actually. <laughs> okay. Nice. Normally I'm just like I hyper focus, but now I've kind of spread things out cuz I'm making a person, not a vampire. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I'm good on abilities. Okay. Anyone need more time? Uh, God, give me one more moment. Okay. So even a mortician, they would still have to go through the, like, because he works for the police academy, correct? Do you think they would have to go through the academy? Even if you're a mortician? A mortician studies something. They go to a mortician school. Uh, like I think you thing. could justify right. picking up a dot of law or two if that's what you're asking. Well, no, I was thinking more of picking up either firearms. Do you think that they would have some sort of training in that considering they're with the police force already? No, but uh, he says no. you can't go shooting on the weekends. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're hanging out with cops all day, like... Good point, so I think you'd know something about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, go for it. Not mean to jump in there, Rachel. I know a mortician in real life. He did not do anything police training wise at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be real creepy, uh, you could go to like a specialized gun range and just play with the pistols to be like, what kind of bullet hole this leave? What kind of bullet hole this one? <laughs> that is so how my. That is definitely something my character would do. They would shoot guns you. just to see what kind of hole would leave. Put in the body. I can't tell you how 100%. much time I spent in the summer of 2017 literally doing just that, but for mm. science. Yeah, it'll be like uh, uh, Dexter practicing yeah. blood spatter techniques. Well, you know. Just to like hone craft. You, if you wanted to be good at guns, you should be a Mythbuster. <laughs> They're really good with guns. They're always shooting ballistics gel. Um. The real secret is both pig skin or uh, or like faux leather draped over ballistics gel, then you get the simulation of the skin. Even then, it's still a bit different, but generally it's not terrible. 
Uh, what's larceny mean? Uh, pickpocket, pickpocketing, lockpicking, just, you know, general ne'er-do-well skills. Okie doke. Again, I feel like you have something in melee considering you work for props. I'm gonna put one in etiquette. Okay, we're good. Okay. Everyone pretty much wrapped up. Neat. Okay. The next step is three dots of backgrounds. Again, normally in vampire character creation, you get a five. For this one, I am restricting you to the mortal only backgrounds. So uh, your options are allies who are mortal people you know, who are willing to help you out. Uh, alternate identity, you have a false identity complete with documentation. Contacts, uh, people who will tell you things. Fame, if you want to be famous. Uh, influence, if you want to have influence in mental or mortal society. Uh, and resources, which represents how much money you have. I would definitely have allies. And you said how many points? I'm sorry. Three. Three. Okay. Yes. Hold up. Then. <laughs> so how much is uh, two dots of resources? Like, what does that equate to? Uh, it equates to you know you've got a fairly comfortable. Um, you live in an apartment. Your car's got some miles on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know you can take vacations that are more like day trips. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Oh, okay, so I'll do that and then put one in influence. I think universally three dots in anything is considered good. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I put all three in allies because his life is probably the, is the police force. Uh, okay. Distinction? Mortician, stuff like that. Yeah, so pick three different groups to be your allies. It sounds like uh, police might be one. Yep. Ooh, yeah. Uh, creative with that one. Oh. Jared, the audience would like to offer some advice that Ooh. you are not talking about a mortician, but a forensic investigator or a medical examiner. Medical examiners. Morticians yeah. work at a funeral home and do the makeup and dressing. Gotcha. Allies, so allies are organizations as opposed to contacts which are individuals, is that correct? Uh, not necessarily. It's more that allies are willing to do you favors and contacts are willing to give you information. Oh, I see. Okay, so that changes things. And thank bit. you, Narf, for telling me that because I always thought they were morticians. But you could probably be a mortician if you really wanted to be. Yeah, there's some overlap there. So. Okay. <laughs> One. So another good one, uh, ally for Jared would be journalists, because you probably have reporters swinging by all the time being like, how'd that guy die? How'd that guy die? <laughs> I was also thinking, do you think like maybe the FBI, considering if there's high profile cases? All Medical right, so. Something that could happen. I will let you take FBI as an ally. Once you're changed, it, they will be very dangerous to use. That, that, that could be very intriguing, though. Mm. I gotta think on it. Okay. That can make for a juicy story. Yeah, because right now, they think uh, you're a person. And like the second Inquisition has no need to think you're suspicious or shady at all. And they probably are in the FBI. Mm. Oh, wait, I might want to do something. I might put one contact in the mob. In, like, an ally in the mob. Oh, or would that be an ally or mm. contact? Be no. Because, let's be honest, if you're looking to move money across borders easily, watches. They're expensive, they let you take them through customs, you know, and they generally hold their value pretty well, right? So, let's Wait, say you want to move... Why do you know move... this? 
<laughs> Don't ask scary questions ever. Especially if Harry suddenly shows up one day wearing a really expensive watch. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so if I show up across question, a border with it. To answer your question, Harry, uh, either one is fine. Just uh, ally is a mobster who's willing to do you favors, and contacts is a mobster who's willing to give you information. Okay. So, Steve, did you have something? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what would work well for my character, because as a judge dipping into the politics when her career kind of fell apart, they might have forego any resources, kind of based on what we talked about. She probably lost all of her resources. Makes sense. If you do crime... What she... Would she have a level of fame or infamy in regard to being a judge that messed up that badly, <laughs> per se? Yeah, you can go ahead and take a dot of fame. Okay, so I'll take one dot of fame. And would you think influence or contact would be better? She wouldn't uh, have allies. I... People probably aren't willing to super help her. Yeah, I think contacts would be better because, you know, they're not willing to stick their neck out for you after your recent, uh, very highly publicized troubles. Okay. Uh, you know, but they're all like, okay, look, here's something you should know. Okay. So I'll take two contacts, one fame. Okay. What are your contacts in? Oh, may I butt in for just a moment? Yes. Narf suggests that you probably still know the fixers, though. Mm, that's Sorry, good. just that. Yeah, that's why I had to say. <laughs> Narf is like on the ball. <laughs> who is that directed to? Wait, who? You, the you. judge. Fi fixers. Okay. Make things happen. You fall from the one line. Yeah. So, so for my i just wanted to tell you my allies so my allies i picked the police department journalists and i also put like the justice system like some of the circuit court judges you probably would be allied with so i just wanted to make sure that was okay yep those are both perfectly fine so my character actually you might know steve's character uh yeah yeah, uh, you probably would have read a lot about Nora in the papers recently because she got caught up in one of those, uh, you know, kickback, uh, give people really high sentences, get a kickback from the private prisons type of scheme. Oh, mm. no. Mm. Bob's like, we'll give you a million dollars if you put this guy away for life. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Yeah, nothing quite that obvious, but it's like, can you just like add on like a little extra like five, seven years on each person you sentence? Oh. Yeah, like actual real life corruption, how that works. <laughs> yeah. That's actually how that, that works. Is how, yeah. Um, okay. Uh <laughs> yeah, so can we so I would think uh either people still in the legal system, either other judges or lawyers that are still pretty active would be one set. And then I think like Narf said, maybe fixers like the people who, those middlemen between the private uh, sector and the courtrooms. Um, maybe those two as my uh, contacts. Yeah. Okay. there. So I'm good on backgrounds. Okay, anyone else need a little more time? I'm pretty good. Excellent. I, well, mine are done, um, and I have some free repoints in those things for because I went through and already made my character. But, um, uh, resources, too, because uh, of Billy's parents, not so much Billy themselves. Um, contacts, one dot, allies, one dot, mentor, one dot. Um, a lot of these are from either where Billy works or Billy's support group or Billy's, uh, therapist. Okay. Is your therapist your mentor? 
Uh, that sounds... well... I'm more curious to know who your mentor is. Probably more along the lines of someone at their workplace. Okay. And um, where does Billy work? Billy works at a deaf oriented, deaf and hard of hearing oriented uh, cap co cafe shop. Coffee shop. So um, the sign language that they know comes in a lot of handy. Also, there's no expectations for Billy to speak, so. Okay, cool. <laughs> Anyone else want some more time with backgrounds, or are we all good? Neat. Okay, so uh, we're gonna skip over disciplines. Those come later. Uh, and now we get to freebie points and merits and flaws. Uh, you get 15 freebie points. You can spend all of them now if you want. Uh, you can hold some or all in reserve until after your embrace if you'd like. And you can also go through and take merits and flaws. And so, uh, flaws give you freebie points on a one-to-one -one basis. Merits cost freebie points on a one-to-one -one basis. So what, do we start with any freebies or...? Yes, yeah, so you start 15? with 15. Uh, okay, and I now. will... Post the cost. And you said two extra points capped for flaws? Or. Uh, so you can take as many flaws as you want. You only get credit for seven. For seven, okay. That would be a lot of flaws, though. <laughs> Yay. Do we got a list we can look at for the merits and freebies? So I just posted the cost for uh, freebie points in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. So it's all a, a copy little of different. The twenty book, but I'll send you an extra. But everyone should have copies. Mm -hmm. I got, I got the copy. That's yeah, they're all in there. All right. Yeah, merits and flaws start on page four seventy nine. Oh my. 487 if we're going by how the PDF counts. It has uh, to count all that fiction. I am willing to take recommendations as I do not know Three. these that well. I don't want to be here all night reading through Man, them. I <laughs> <laughs> um, and I assume these have to be human too. Like we're like I'm not gonna say yeah, like ones. vulnerability to silver wouldn't work. Right. I mean, or maybe that's something that, uh, you know, you've got a strange ancestry. Oh, that's weird. I mean, well, you know, even regular people have silver allergies. That is true. That is true. Uh, Ever, have you taken the hard of hearing flaw? Yes, indeed. And okay. also... I'm gonna take time sense, because that sounds way too on the nose. I'm finding it somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, there they are. Humanity's uh, of... flash path is nothing, correct? Not yet, correct? Vampire yeah, vampire. so uh, all of you uh, oh wait, no, we still she's still need to do that. Yeah, we're gonna handle um, your humanity in just a bit. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there ever. Which you do. Um, so, hard of hearing, uh, speech impediment because Billy is ASL or Ecolalia, also known as parroting, or um, using uh, alternate communication like uh, voice to text or text to voice, sorry. And then also, Tyler, what was that one? Um, Never had... has. Uh, speech impediment, hard of hearing, and expendable, but the expendable one was supposed to be for, you know, later. <laughs> well, no, you had mentioned another one, um, since they're non-binary, but they're femme-presenting, uh... Oh, they took that out of E20, so I never gave it to you, but that was a flaw that used to exist. It was called mistreated um... minority. Rachel may still let you take it. It doesn't matter either way. 
if Rachel does allow it, that would actually add points that I did not put on your sheet to you, to freebies. Yeah, so... I don't really like running, like, real-world isms in my vampire games. Fair. Like, people are gonna give you shit for all the fictional stuff about your character. So, like, your your clan and your generation and uh, the fact that you're Sabat, that's what they're gonna care about. They're not gonna care about your gender or your ethnicity or anything like that. I don't give a shit that you're autistic. It's the fact that you're a insert vampire clan here. <laughs> right, because uh, the most terrifying character in this whole setting is a uh, four and a half foot tall African woman. So. Okay. Eric, what's your background again or your concept? <gasps> uh, homeless nomadic vampire? Are you a Narc's a good Narc. Narc, Narc's a fun flaw. flaw. Narc? Seven points of flaws. Oh, that means I have a rat to the police? <laughs> right, and then that translates to a vampire thing <laughs> later, too. Well, I mean, I don't think so, just because he's homeless in L.A. and fuck the police. <laughs> I'm I don't see him being a narc. <laughs> I feel I like, him, I like living in Skid Row. I feel like I get a pretty decent wage where I work, so I'm going to put one dot in resources. Okay. Why are you homeless? X and Curse, this is a Sabat game. Close. No H. <laughs> Why are you I homeless? I already got stranded. So it's I not because... from Eastern Europe and... So it's not anything you did. Like, you're not a lazy ne'er-do-well. No. And you weren't like somebody stole your family and took your house or something. None of that. I don't think so. I think if anything, he's in trouble with the law, potentially. That might be a flaw. Which is why he's so good at larceny, potentially. There is a flaw called hunted. Oh, where is it? It's technically vampire related, but I'm sure Rachel would make that work for you, crime. I've got a couple ideas. <laughs> I got a question. Yes. Um, two questions. So I was thinking about going with the Merit cold, Coldly Logical. Mm-hmm. And it says you get minus one difficulty on all roles related. It doesn't really show any roles in the book. Is that something that's done by the GM? Uh, what page is that on? Page one, page 484. <clears throat> and then my second one. Check your side, Eric. Uh, so I would give that difficulty to roles like uh, empathy and anything that you would need to use to uh, tell uh, what someone is feeling. Okay. As you can see though, Eric, that flaw, that gives you a lot of points because <laughs> that's a dangerous flaw. Which flaw? Yeah. Hunted is a four Hunted. point flaw. Oh, I could say like he's uh, Romanian and like you think he's like a sorcerer witch or something like that, so maybe that's why he's being uh, uh, chased around. It, it is entirely possible that justified or not, the second Inquisition has caught your scent. And that might <laughs> be part of the reason why you have to live on the streets, because like, if you're in the system, they'll go. find you. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> one of my flaws are going to be nightmares. Okay. Remember, Jared, if you take all seven points, this is going to drastically affect your character. What? Your flaws. I notice you stacking them. Don't oh, no, do I'm it to min max. That'll hurt. No, I'm, uh. No, I'm. want to do one flaw and one merit. And my one flaw is nightmares. I have I'm taking the flaws unconvinced, impatient, and short fuse. Nice. I, also, I might take. I might take another flaw just for fun. I also was going to take impatient. <laughs> because I'm just impatient in real life. It's like a really bad habit, but uh, not I that I'm rude about it. I just get frustrated. I can change that. I don't think we need to double No, go for it. Keep it. great. It makes for a really fun pack dynamic when two of you are like, okay, let's go. Let's go already. Ooh, uh, uh, can I be vengeful? Okay, so we need to talk this through, I think, before I take it. Because it's vengeful okay. jumped out to me, because with the way that she's gonna play out everything, 
I feel like she's going to want to take vengeance on what happened to her, but I don't know if that's something that she'll ever actually be able to do based on what we talked about. So would that be a flaw worth taking? I mean, you can always blame someone else okay. for what happened. Okay. So like you can blame like you can blame your your partner for abandoning you and you can blame like the prosecutor for, you know, come on, we were colleagues for years. He couldn't even cut me a break. Okay. I did like a dog. That and seems take, fun. I'll take vengeful. Uh That sounds fun. Oh, I actually changed it for my nut, for my uh flaw. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go a victim of the masquerade. <laughs> Refusing that you are a vampire, even though you are a vampire. <laughs> that one will be fun for you. It will be. That's what I think, dude. <laughs> uh, any suggestions for merits? I don't know where to begin. Oh, I'm taking there's so many. <laughs> Holy, that's so cool. Take the extra freebie points. That way you get 19 freebies, and it's much cheaper for you to buy a fourth discipline dot when you turn. Sure. Your character very much seems like the type that's going to have to fall back on their powers to survive, not their connections Mm. in real life. Eric, for you, a deceptive aura or inoffensive to animals might be fun. Aura. Uh, Jared, you mentioned sort of being a seer. Uh, there is a regular ability on page 493 that gives you that ability. Ooh, let's see. Uh, which one was it? Uh, that is called a regular ability, 493 on the right column. Oh, Touch of Frost is so cool. Oh my god. Oh, I, I'm taking seven dots of flaws just because they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Speaking like... of the unholy <laughs> touch of frost, that shit's wild. So, I got 15. I used one on resources. Oh. Two on my flaws. Failure. You once had a title in the city, but failed catastrophically in your duties. You're not very incompetent, excluded from circles of power and responsibility. Does that work as a mortal, or is that specifically to vampire? Uh, that is specifically to vampires. Understood. Oh, I'm gonna need lucky. Yep, that's, that's what I'm picking. Hate to disappoint you, Narf, but this <laughs> character shit, is in fact not mid-maxed. I could take true Not the faith. way you think. How would that work as a vampire with true faith? You melt when you look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have no reflection. You are the reason spontaneous combustion exists. Yeah, I'm Actually, not taking Actually, all right. You want to know what happens to a vampire with true faith? Check out the TikTok video I left for our Sunday crew in our Discord. <laughs> About Furio. Uh, Harry, to answer your question on true faith, uh, it depends on what your true faith is in. True faith in King? Go for it really hard to get i will not let you have that right now yeah of course uh (laughs) true faith in like the uh christianity uh incredible crushing self-hatred which you can only really resolve by either suicide or pursuing golconda hmm yeah i'm not gonna keep i'm not taking true faith then what's golconda uh neighbor to wakanda i'm not sure (laughs) Uh, no. So Golconda is sort of, uh, it's almost a myth in uh, vampiric culture and society. Mm-hmm. There's this idea that at some point uh, you can sort of train your soul to overcome the inherent curses of vampirism. So you're pretty much at humanity 10, which means you're essentially a living saint. Uh, and then a whole bunch of mechanical restrictions uh go away so you still can't walk in the sunlight but you don't need to drink blood as frequently uh, and i believe you can stay up during the day uh but it is really difficult to get there because you can't get there without a teacher and once you're there you can't really advertise yourself as a teacher because everyone wants to kill you (laughs) oops 
Thank you for that explanation. That is fascinating. Yeah. It's it's not really a thing that people would want to chase down in a Sabbat game. I mean, maybe. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure um, for my two, ma I got two merits and one flaw. My one flaw is the victim of the masquerade. Um, and then magic resistance and orac or killer ability for my merits. Oracular? Yeah, oracular. Oh, wow. Okay. okay, so I got seven points of, uh, of, I still got 15 freebies, so I'll save those. Well, I have 14 left. Because the way I'm going to try to build it is it's kind of like a false prop. False prophet, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> with dead things. So, anyone else have questions? Oh, so many. Okay, that's what I'm here for. But. All right. <coughs> so, I got so two. Seven points after that. I think I'm going to put more into my abilities. Ooh, I am not seeing infamy. As a social flaw. It might not have made it into V20. <clears throat> I can find you the old one, Steve, so you can see the mechanics on them. Uh, well, we'll just stick with... I think, I think I'm good with what I've got. I'm just going to stick with the two. I don't need a thousand okay. flaws. I'm good. Um, okay. Um, uh, and merits are, have to come from the freebie points, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So you can earn merits in play with XP. Okay. All right. So that gets me up to 18 freebie points, three extra points. I'm gonna bump that up oh, by no. one, which oh, my law. Three points. Let's see. Willpower. Abilities cost two, so now I am down to 16. I believe I am done. Okay, so. Willpower. Well, I'm sorry. Willpower is made up of. Yeah, so this is the final step, oh, okay. uh, is your morality. So, you automatically have one dot in uh, conscience, courage, and uh, self-control. Uh, you now have seven more dots to spend between the two. And it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Conscience is your sense of uh, morality and your responsibility to other people. Self-control is how easy it is for you to just, you know, not lose your temper, fly off the handle, and courage is, you know, how likely are you to run into that burning building over there. Done. Also, thanks for the follow, Lost Tribes Gaming. Oh, hello. Thank you. You're not lost anymore. You're here. Home. Uh, I yes. agree. We do need more V20 <laughs> and definitely more Sabat, and I am doing my part. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think I am good on virtues. Okay. So your willpower is equal to your courage. Okay. I put points, my some of my freebie points in willpower. And could you explain <laughs> that thing again? Uh, which one? Um, the points, basically what we're going to be doing next. Okay, yeah, so you've got three virtues. They are conscience, self-control, and courage. And so conscience is, you know, how obligated do you feel to help other people? How bad do you feel when you hurt someone else? Uh, self-control is your ability to just keep your shit together and not lose your temper, uh, not fly off under the handle. Courage is yeah, what it sounds like, it is courage. Uh, and so, 
your willpower will be equal to your courage rating, and your humanity will be equal to your conscience plus your self-control. Ah. And we get seven points to divide that up, correct? Yep. Uh, I can see him being... And then humanity is equal to what? Uh, humanity is equal to your conscience plus your self-control. Okay. So we put seven points between conscious, self-control, and courage. Okay. Cool. Yep, and you start with one dot in those automatically. And then courage is just that separate that isn't used for willpower. No, courage is willpower. Oh, courage! You're just your courage is your willpower flat. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So your courage becomes your starting willpower. You can increase it with freebies or XP. Mm hmm. I think he. Uh, I definitely want to max up courage because willpower is always awesome. So three. And as a vampire, courage can be super useful to keep you from fear frenzy. Okay. Okay, Do you come do on. anything with disciplines? Disciplines, I will. I haven't you. gotten there yet. Later, yeah, when we. I... Braced, I guess that's when okay. those get okay. kind. <laughs> Come on, circle fill, fill the circle. Come on, oh. come on, come on. There we go. Uh, I'm good. So, can we go up to four dots, or can we do all five dots? Uh, yes, because every dot that you put in one virtue is a dot that is not there somewhere else. There's well, definitely no, like, a lot of opportunity cost going on. Is it capped at four, or can I do all five dots? That's you can go up to all five. Okay, thank you. Empathy is reading people, right? Like, being able to pick up if they're lying or their body language. Mm -hmm. Expression is... Uh... Expression is pretty much being able to, like, give an inspiring speech. Okay. Leadership, and that separates leadership in that... So, leadership is more convincing people that you have the best idea and they should do what you say. Okay. And... And I have another question. So... With courage, does that permanently raise your willpower? Or is it just added on? So I know if you buy courage right now, that would increase your willpower. Uh, I would have to look up for XP because I think I know the answer, but I don't know if I'm thinking of the right addition. Okay. I just didn't know <coughs> if it auto like if it permanently did so or not. At creation, <laughs> yes. So all my squares would be checked. If if the question you're asking, Jared, is for some strange reason Rachel rips courage dots away from you in the future, your willpower won't go down. Also, <laughs> but okay. that doesn't—that's not a thing that happens in this game either, really. Okay. You can lose those dots if you switch from humanity to a path, though. That can get weird. Okay. That can get very weird. So. Sorry, I mean, okay. I'm done. I, I put four in courage, two in conviction, which is probably going to be his thing, and then uh, one in self control. So, okay. three, four, five. To, to be very talk, like, if I want to just be able to, con like, converse and like get people like you know manipulative but also like you know convincing like just that all around sort of face mechanic like what should i be like empathy expression leadership intimidation is that kind of the the bulk there uh i would go with either expression or leadership uh because empathy is uh something that we'd use to tell something about someone else okay. uh, and intimidation would be doing that in a very specific way like do what I say or I will cause you pain 
There's a time and a place for that. I put. I have three dots in intimidation starting off. Okay. Uh, Rachel, just I so you know. I plan to make to, threats. To clarify, virtues increased by experience have no impact on humanity, path, or willpower once creation is complete. Thank you. So no, Jared, if you raise your virtues with XP, nothing else goes up. Okay. In the future. They do go up with freebie points. Cool. Okay. I am... <coughs> <Sorry. laughs> and are freebies, like, equal to XP and what they're worth? Oh, no. Uh, no. Rachel Rachel put it in Sunday Round 2 chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, Very you, different. You currently do not have any XP. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have two in empathy just to tell if people are lying to me a little bit. Three in expression, one in intimidation just to have it. Three in leadership, so that's three expression, three leadership. Hopefully that makes me somewhat good. Three in etiquette, knowing how to act in different places and do the right thing, right? Yeah. Okay. And then three academics, one in finance, because I used to be able to handle my money. Some investigation just for dealing with all the crime stuff. Four in law, three in politics. Oh, there it is. Anything that seems like I'm blatantly missing? That sounds really cool. Okay. I have three freebies left. Um... So I actually, I can bump up one more ability. What's your willpower at? Uh, I've already spent it. I, mean, I put, I dumped four into willpower to get it up to seven. What's your humanity at? Because that's going to matter too, unless you plan to go to a path. One, two, three, four, f one, four, seven. Because oh. I have four in conscience and three in self-control. I'm four, three, three. three. You could also Given, save things uh, for back, what you backgrounds. Me? I'm sorry? I was telling him you could also save them for his character's backgrounds after shovel heading. Yes, you can. Uh, and also, given what you've told me about your character's background, uh, you should not go be, uh, above seven. Okay. Okay. No, I was good with seven, yeah. Um, but what do you have in politics, though? As the judge, you'd have something. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. go to four with that. I have that, three probably. in politics. Probably wouldn't go to... What about investigation? Uh, two in investigation. Yeah, I don't think I'd go to three with that either. I'd probably save them for backgrounds if it was me. Or, raise your virtues. Those matter. Like, you, you want to not frenzy and murder 20 mortals when you run out of blood points to get set on fire? You need virtues. Uh... I was a pretty even split. I did four, three, three, so... I mean, I'd go five, five, five if I had the points. <laughs> they matter a lot. Uh, how much to up a virtue? Two, same uh, as a uh, two. Okay. Oh, I could do five, five, five. I could like two, two, two. So that'd be six, eight, ten. Oh yeah, I could totally do five, five, five. Wait a minute. I'm sitting on a uh, six humanity and four willpower as a mortal. Oh, I'd yeah. raise that willpower. Can't raise it later, huh? Sure you can, Probably but you it's can... expensive. Yeah. No, with freebie points then. Okay. Oh yeah, freebies Which... are one for one. Ah. Okay. It's just like mage in every other quad game. Yeah. If you want it, yeah, the only time it's ever going to be cheap is when you first start. From... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got from this game. From the last time I played it, anyways. Okay. <sighs> I put. I have my, all my virtues are now maxed. Well done, sir. I have five freebies. I might reallocate, depending, but like in later okay. tonight if I change my mind. But yeah, what's I think the... I, that's what I'm gonna stick with. Yeah, that, Rachel, what's the grace I... period for? Oh my god, I fucked this up. I gotta change everything. <laughs> so, wait, so would my humanity then be ten? Uh, if you're five and everything, yes, you're ten humanity. Jesus. But only for like twenty minutes, because the first time you lie. <laughs> Oh yeah, that sounds about right. And humanity is like the perfect human. You are saintly. Isn't that where? Isn't like the next step? Step is basically Vlakanda, and you can actually get out of the vampirism. No, it's not just humanity. 
Yeah, uh, Golconda is a process, and it's a struggle. It's like looking for enlightenment. Like, mm. you don't find it, like, just because you wake up with a high humanity. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm not gonna... Finding Golconda is like figuring out the point of life. So, right. what, so conscious and convi- conscience and conviction, like, are those... How does that play in? Like, how would, if I ever had to roll that, or? All right, so the way it goes is that these are paired virtues. Mm -hmm. I love how Steve's just giggling now. It was your, like, the smile you had when you were like, all right, and it just, it was just funny, like, I don't, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, right now everyone is on the path of humanity. And so, uh, because you're all mortals. And so uh, you have conscience and self-control as your primary virtues. Once you get on a path of enlightenment and an alternate uh, system of morality, because the path of enlightenment is essentially tricking your soul into thinking that right and wrong are calibrated very differently. Uh, And so then you would switch from conscience to conviction and you would switch from self-control to I think it should be instinct on your sheet yeah yeah okay I'm gonna think on it then because I don't know if I want to take humanity 10 because immediately you know that'll drop so I might just stick to like keep humanity at 7 and spend my freebies elsewhere I'll decide in a minute yeah so one thing to keep in mind is that yeah Losing humanity does not penalize you mm-hmm. the way that losing it in Requiem does, because every time you lose uh, humanity in Requiem, you risk developing a derangement. Mm-hmm. Uh, that does not exist in this system. Is it similar to V5, where humanity just determines like how alive you look and what certain alive people things you can do? Essentially, yes. Okay. I might want to look a bit dead then, so... I think I'll keep my conscience a bit low. Yeah, I maxed out my willpower. Do we uh, do our attributes go up once we're embraced? Is that the idea? Yes. Okay. Because they were badasses. I see. For the undead badasses. <laughs> I'm excited to see what I'm going to become. Really. Uh, so just to confirm, I'm kind of done assigning points. I have three freebies left that I figured we'll just find a place to slot them by the end of the session or next session, if you're okay with that. Okay. Excellent. Cool. I'm also going to do that, too. I love the phrase, get off humanity that I just keep seeing pop up in chat. Just like, <laughs> just just get off humanity. Just, just. Give it up. Like, like right now, drug. like. <laughs> like it's an unfortunate addiction. Bob, Bob you've got to stop doing humanity. <laughs> it's no good for you. Hey, you're furious. <laughs> uh, and yes, Lost Tribes Gaming is correct. Humanity is uh, still very common in the Sabbat because as we are about to find, they keep doing shovel parties and cycling in new embraces who, you know, either they succeed or they flame out and die, but either way, there's, you know, a healthy turnover. There's always a good number of humane savat. Damn it, Eric. (laughs) Oh. Oh yes, all of those ghastly things that I'm really going to enjoy doing to everyone here. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ghastly, you say? I was thinking about doing this character where they knew God was I don't know. I really thought it would be funny if someone did this character where, like, the character knew that the GM was there, but. Malkavian? 
Yeah, kind of like that. Like, <clears throat> kind of like a meta thing where they actually knew they didn't. They knew they knew someone was like making this happen. But yeah, whenever he told them out, they, they were just fucking nuts. <laughs> I I've seen that happen at uh, fantasy buffer alarms because at those games, the GM staff they communicate with walkie talkies. And so one character got insight into what the gods were up to. And so they just gave them an audio only walkie talkie. Wow. Really funny. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, yes, Lost Tribes. They're, they're going to run into a lot of fun people. Uh, I think you missed the introduction when I said that the Camarilla part of the city is run by Prince Tourette Vorman. I don't know who that is, but he sounds terrible. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah. She sure is. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, any final wrap-ups, final details, anything that anyone wants to get done? Any last I'm words? excited to find out what <laughs> vampire I am. Same here. Yeah, I feel like we, you know, by giving you our three favorites, we kind of bought a scratch off ticket and we're going to win something. We just don't <laughs> know if it's going to be a dollar or five hundred dollars. Exactly. <laughs> or just like a kick in the face. Yeah. What if Wait, the real you lottery off? is the experiences we had on the way? Yep. <laughs> ah, fuck that. Real lottery. <laughs> I want money. <laughs> uh, and yes, Lost Tribes Gaming, uh, they're all uh, mortal or were at one point, and I'm going to take that away from them. Oh my. All right, so, uh, yes, any last words was ever said? Uh, oh, last words. What would my last words be? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! Why did you bite me? <laughs> it's my hairy Armenian ass. Anyways. <laughs> that's what I think my last words are gonna be. No, wait a minute. You need to... Cards Against Humanity give blank cards, and that needs to be one that we have for you, Harry. <laughs> it's just hold it up. <laughs> Oh my god. I think I'm that'd an be adult. a cool mechanic. Just last words and it kinda can tie into the story. Oh, I had a DM who once had a player who was like a had could see into the future in D and D, and the way they would do it is the DM would draw three cards against humanity cards and then just integrate that into the story somehow. And so the and then hand and hand them to the clairvoyant, of course, at the beginning of the game. It's just a wonderful system. So <laughs> stupid, but so fun. Oh my god. Oh my god. Black rubber dick, what the oh fuck? Oh my god, kid. This is Jane. Jane was the DM who did this. Lost Trev's game, he just killed me. Oh my god. Are what are what did they? <laughs> What'd they say? We gave you that light switch to turn the lights off and on, not to throw raves. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. On a serious note, I think my last words are gonna be. Uh, this is not your vampire. This is you as the player. I know. Yes. Both are oh, me as God. a vampire and me but as a player. Those are either way. My last I words. think that would be a cool system. Like if we actually did our mortals, like last words, and have it kind of tie into their personality and or Wait, what? story. I think that'd be kind of cool. Oh no! What'll okay. that say about my personality then? <laughs> like you love You're... your kid. Like you said. Last You're thing very I thought, Armenian ass. I love my kids. Yeah, my and then that could be ass, like a yeah. thing. So, mm. The just, last thing I have to say is crochet Baphomet. <laughs> my last thing <laughs> is is my last thing. Oh, I shouldn't go all conspiracy theorists on this. Okay, so we open. <clears throat> With Jared, your character, Dimitri, at work. My guy wanders in. He's about, you know, mid 40s, looks like he works a desk job, 
And he's like, hey, do you have a bathroom I could use? What? And were you... I'm confused. You said Dimitri? Uh, that, that's your character's name, right, Jared? No, it's Drew. Drew, I'm sorry. <laughs> Too many yeah. D characters. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, it'll help it if straight. everybody puts their PC name in Zoom. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a good oh, idea. Yep. I can do that. I'll do that now. Although some of us put our names in Zoom, but a certain people still can't remember them. <laughs> oh no. Steve. It's okay, Steve. We love you. You're never gonna live that down. <laughs> Happened once. <laughs> once. I one time, I, man. I, I still forget. If it's any consolation, I once forgot my aunt's name, like last year for some reason, in the middle of like Chris. The good news is I didn't tell that aunt I forgot their name, but I was like, Mom, holy shit, I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> no, I forget All names right. randomly. So, Drew, you're at work. This guy comes in. Hey, do you have a bathroom I could use? Uh, he just kind of, he pays no mind, and he's looking at a body. He's like, yeah, it's off to the left somewhere. Yeah, over there. Cool, thanks. So he disappears, comes back a few minutes later. Thanks, dude. Hey, wow. You're like a medical examiner or something, right? Yeah, and I, I, I have a lot of shit to do. He looks up and he's like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. This is oh. authorized personnel. Shit. You know what, man? I'm sorry. Uh, can I ask a favor? Uh, why would I, why? What do you want? I, I, look, I just, I just really need someone to do me a favor. It's, it's, look, can you just call my wife and tell her I'll miss her? That's all. Okay, this is, why can't you call her? That makes no sense. Cause I, I, I gotta go. Mm. I got a lot of shit to do. Like, I, I really don't have time for this. Why why can't you get Joe Schmo down the street to do it for you? All that? right, you know what? Sorry, I asked. You <coughs> be careful out there tonight. And he leaves. Thank you. Jeez. Do not trust uh, this man. Yeah. That so, and his head is like 10 feet deep in his work. <laughs> okay. He's you immensely die. pissed that he got interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you continue working. And then... You know, the field coroner, wheels in a body. I right, got a fresh one for you. Some oh, kind of road rage incident. Oh, Jesus. Man. The leg came uh, right off. Well, definitely It's found that there. guy who was just asking to use the bathroom. <laughs> I looked to the field coroner. Are you sure? I just saw this guy. Uh, he, like, got shot like four hours ago. Let out instantaneously. What do you, what do you, I literally, he just walked in to try to use the bathroom. So they look around. <coughs> Feeling okay, dude? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess not. Uh, Jesus, I guess. Well, let's get going with the autopsy, I guess. Okay. I'm a death, and I start recording all, all the, uh, start doing paperwork on it, time of death, doing the whole procedure. Okay, yeah, and uh, he's definitely been dead for a while. Jesus, God, I could have sworn. And he's just kind of mumbled, mumbling under his breath. He's like, I could have swore this guy was, I could have swore that this guy came in here not even five minutes ago. <sighs> Whatever. And he just does his work, cuts him open, stuff like that. Okay. Go home at the end of the day? Yep. Do you ever call his wife? Honestly, that he saw him, he would probably think his wife is probably worried sick or something. 
So yes, he would call his wife to tell him the bad news. Okay. So, uh, phone rings, woman's voice on the other end. Uh, hello? Hi, uh, this is Jared and I give my, well not, this is Drew. Um, I'm from the Los Angeles Police Department on the corner. I just, I have some bad news for you. Um, your husband seems to have passed away recently. Really weird. What? No, yeah. no, I, I saw him just this morning. I, I, I don't know what happened. He came in. Uh, <coughs> I did the uh, autopsy. It, uh, it looks like he got shot four times with uh, with a regular hand pistol. Well, handgun. Uh, and so you hear the doorbell ring. Oh, uh, excuse me. Hmm. Door opens. And then uh, you hear two people say, like, uh, hello, ma'am, we're detectives with the police department. What'd you say? Come in. Uh, yeah, sure. Come on in. No, no, they're asking her. Oh. So you're on the phone with her, and they've just come to her door to tell her what you are right now. Well, I, I tell her, calm down, just breathe, go with them. I'm sure they're not gonna hurt you or anything like that. You just wanna ask you a few questions. Just do what you gotta do, all right? Just do what they say. <clears throat> Stuff like that. I'm sure it's nothing serious. Hangs up. And then I kind of hang up and let them do what they need to do. Okay. So, you're driving home. It's pretty late at night. You hear a tremendous screech, the sound of broken glass, your car spins around twice, and then everything goes black. Mm. You wake up with dirt in your mouth. Tyler! Hi. Hey. So, you go through your normal go-to-bed procedure, pass out, wake up with dirt in your mouth. Hmm. So, Eric. Hmm. You're on Skid Row. You know it's dangerous. You're pretty good at sensing when and where the danger's gonna be, which is why when you get caught up and aroused, it catches you by surprise. <laughs> and so you see people that you know, you know, just fighting. Yeah, a normal occurrence. <laughs> I'm sorry? A normal occurrence. Yeah, so, do you try to run away? Do you try to stay and fight back? That depends. Do I know them? Some of them. Uh, well, I mean, I know they're them, not like your bosom buddies, but like, you know, you've shared food with them. Cigarettes. We're all one big family, he says. He rolls up his sleeves when he jumps right in. Bam! 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 <laughs> okay. So... It's like, whose streets? My streets. <laughs> and there's your accent, Ever. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the ugliest, absolute ugliest person that you have ever seen grabs you, drags you into a side alleyway. And he bites you. Ah, why would you bite? God damn but, it. Oh, shit. Like, so there's this initial moment of pain. But then it feels really, really good. Who bites people? Oh, you know, that's not too bad. No, so it is, you are insensate. It feels that good. And so it goes on for a while. And you can tell 
that they are taking too much. But you no longer have the strength to fight back. Oh, shit. And then he drops you on the ground. And so your vision's kind of fading, getting cloudy, and you can feel your heartbeat slowing down. And you see this just tremendous inhuman monstrosity that was just had its teeth deep in your neck fall to the ground and start retching. Uh-oh. And starts vomiting up blood. Your blood. All of it. And then just starts shriveling up and before your eyes just dissipates into dust. And you only have a few heartbeats left and you hear, oh shit, this is our chance. And something is shoved into your face. It's a dented pewter beer stein. And it's full I'm of ignorant blood. of what a beer stein. Oh wait, okay, it's a, like a okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's made out of pewter, like what people uh, carry around at the rent fair. Yeah, but at the rent fair, they don't fill it with blood. Oh, that is disgusting. Wait, this tastes pretty good. But you can sense you are on death's doorstep, and this is the only thing that will save you. And. <sighs> You can't even resist. Your survival instinct takes over. And you drink. Oh, shit. And you pass out, and you wake up with dirt in your mouth. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Okay. Effort. Billy's walking home. Way, way too late at night. And you're probably, as you generally are, sort of in your own little world. You don't really hear the van when it stops next to you. All you know is that you get grabbed, yanked into it. It's a van full of strangers. You've never seen any of these people before. Uh... And there's someone who just looks, you don't even know how to describe him. And he just says to you in a really raspy voice, Hey, little girl, have you ever wanted to be famous? Does he say this in my good ear or my bad ear? Uh, He says it in your good ear. You You can understand him. Actually, you know what? No, he doesn't say it in your... Yeah. Um, Billy, Billy is, first of all, screaming and flailing um, because number one, strangers, number two, enclosed space, and, and number three, I don't know what's going on. Um, I might turn on an emergency signal on my phone because Billy always has their phone handy. Okay. Press a button uh-huh. and it just makes this loud like beep noise continuously yeah so you do that and someone grabs the phone out of your hand and in front of you just breaks it in half Hmm. billy billy's gonna stop screaming just in shock and and sign break why break why and so the person who grabbed you oh shit this was broken and sort of just knocks you to the end of the van. Oh. But you're caught in the arms of this other woman. And as she touches you, you can feel there is a humming in her flesh. It's the same sort of vibrations that you get when you listen to music. Or like, if you're ever, um, I I don't imagine Billy goes to many concerts where there's loudspeakers. Um, actually, Believe it or not, uh, a lot of my deaf friends really, really love concerts because the speakers, the subwoofers are normally really loud, especially like techno 
So, or okay. like a uh, rap or, or hip hop, they'll stand next to the speakers and feel it. So, yeah. That is exactly the experience that you have with this woman. And like she looks down at you and sort of like touches you gently on the side of your face and strokes your hair a little bit and says, No, no, this one's special. This one's mine. Mm -hmm. And you wake up with dirt in your mouth. Oh no! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harry! Mm hmm. You also like taking long walks late at night, right? I certainly do. I certainly do. Let's. Long yeah. day at work, nice stressful day. I'm gonna take a walk. Okay. So, again, you make probably not the safest decisions. And you're like, oh, hey, this alley, it's a nice shortcut. But also then you. People, nobody, people, people know me. People don't fuck with me. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. So, a guy, big beefy guy, steps in front of you. He's, uh,. It looks kind of Hispanic. He's got long brown hair. It's kind of tangled. Uh, the thing that really draws your attention, though, is he's got two big swords strapped to his back. I'm just gonna stand there and look at him for a second. I'm just gonna. Yeah, say, he's got oh. like a he's got a bandana on as well. Are we gonna have a problem. Make you a deal. How about I make you a deal? Get out of my way. Let me go on my walk, and maybe I won't shoot you. I'll give you a free shot. Hit me. <laughs> if you can hit me, I'll let you go. I've had a long day. I'm not in the mood for this. You know what? Fucking lunatic. And I will take my pistol out from uh, my out from my waistband and say, "Okay, you've got one last oh, chance." No. What kind of fighter are you? Come on, uh -huh. punch me. Free shot. You know... <laughs> you're a big guy. I'm not a big guy. This is how I fight. If I can't win a fair fight, then I don't fight fair. I'm fighting fair. Get out of my way. I like you. Do you know who I am? Do you know who the fuck you're messing with? Do you tell. <laughs> I don't have time for this. And I'm gonna blast him. I am... Okay. I've had a long day. Some guy comes up to me in an alley with two swords. He's either gonna <laughs> murder me or is just like... I'm pretty sure if I have to explain this to the police, they'll be like, yeah, why the fuck is there a guy with two swords coming <laughs> up to you? Okay, so... You aim, you fire, it hits. You can see it hit because it tears a hole in his shirt. Uh, but it's almost like, uh, you know, you've seen enough superhero shows. It's like the Luke Cage thing. Like the bullet doesn't break his skin. No, oh, fuck me. <laughs> so it's, it's embedded there and then it pops out, clatters to the floor. You? And so, the last thing that you see is his fist coming at your face. And you wake up with dirt in your mouth. <laughs> Steve. Yes? Steve's <laughs> so like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> tell us a little bit about Nora's life. Oh, jeez. Um, so, Nora is that classic story of driven from a very early age, permanent overachiever, and she knew what she wanted to be from a very young age. Um, and she went out and she got it. She wanted to be a lawyer, and she excelled at being a lawyer. And for a long time, she was very much drawn to the law as a tool for good. She truly believed that it was there to help people, and she wanted to help people um, no matter what position she held. And eventually realized she needed to be higher up, 
she always wants the next position up to do better, to fix things where there's problems, and to control the situation to a degree. Um, and that led her to being a judge. Um, and she was excelling as a judge. She was moving quickly through the ranks, up the circuits, um, and then s realized that in order to make the next step, you needed to get into the politics of the law. And so she started to move her way into that, eyeing maybe a representative spot down the line or somewhere leading up. But then things went badly, as suddenly it came out that she was involved in several um, we'll say illicit activities, um, a series of kickbacks um, in regard for certain judgments, um, harsher sentences, private prisons being paid for, um, just anything that a anything that a judge could get um, knocked for. It came out that she was doing it okay and, and so yeah. over the last six months your life has just fallen apart your spouse has left you taking the kids <sighs> yeah you had a really nice house it's in foreclosure your car got repoed, and you knew, like, the one thing that you kept current on were your car Even payments. Your car. Still got repoed. I assume all of my assets are frozen. Bank accounts. I have nothing. Yeah. I... So Nora did not do a lot of what they're saying she did and someone out there has is doing this to me and I'm going to find out who and that's yeah. what she's been doing in between fights with her spouse and colleagues <laughs> and anyone else who's trying to come at her so where where do you think she's living right now oh man she's probably living in some cheap hotel that she's paying for with the last of the cash she was able to pull out from her account before it got frozen completely. So she's probably living off a couple thousand dollars trying to figure out what she's going to do next. Okay. There is a knock at your motel door. Uh, she has, like, files and copies of things she's, like, going through. She's like... that just tries to make no noise maybe they'll go away knocks again uh, she kind of like gets up and goes to the window and kind of like look or the the the, the people sorry the mm -hmm. people kind of like looks through uh it is the most stunningly beautiful woman you have ever met and there's also something extremely terrifying about her. Can I help you? You say that through the door? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure you can't, but I can help you. I'm... I'm sorry? Open the door. <sighs> Nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> goes to like all the things like okay if I open this door I'm allowing them to enter the thing okay that will put me in they're not gonna and like do like all the legal ramifications if something goes <laughs> bad here if I op willingly open this door okay turn the deadlock undo the chain just kind of crack the door a little bit who are you you can call me Layla I do I know you no should I know you? Oh, no. Not if I'm doing my job right. Goodness. 
isn't this a downgrade from the life you had? Oh my god. Okay. That's okay. Right. You, no, never. Thank you. Have a good night. I'm not in the Would mood. Would you like it back? As I'm closing the door. That life's gone. I know. There's no getting it back. Well, maybe not exactly what you had, but what if you could get something better? I'm gonna make a really bad joke right now. <laughs> what was that? I said I want to make a really bad joke right now. <laughs> um... What is it you want? I want you to work for me. You have a job? Mm-hmm. This is an odd way to ask... This is an odd way it's to offer to a job. It's going to be a very odd sort of job. Um... I... She's like, I'm not sure... Um, if you have an office, I'd be happy to visit during business hours. I'm a little, like, I'm, this is just, I'm... So. Oh, no. No, you've got to decide right now. It's very simple. I'll give you tasks, send you to complete them with other people. You tell me how they do. In return, power, money, respect. It's like a consultant job. More like fixer, but you know, <laughs> high caliber fixer. Crack the door open a little bit more. Do you want to come in? It's probably for the best. I'll let her in. So, uh, she will step in close the door, make sure that the curtains are firmly closed. We have a deal? I... setting you up for something. I hope it sticks. I'll kind of have my back to her as I'm going through my papers. I'm interested. I'm just, you know, I'll need a little bit more information, but I think, I think we'll be able to come to something. It sounds like... I'm just shuffling good. through my papers and, like, So all half you hear agreeing. is her say, good... Uh, and then you feel like a brief moment of pain. Ah! And then ecstasy. Oh. And then death. And you wake up with dirt in your mouth. I assume mm -hmm. I just collapse and like bang my head on the desk on the way down. Mm. Oh no, no, you're in her arms right now. Oh. Oh. Okay. She's not gonna let you fall. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then wake up with dirt in my mouth. Yep. And that's where we'll go to break. Oh! Come on, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That was awesome. <laughs> okay. 1041, everyone. We'll be back approximately 1051 or 2-ish. All right. Thank you.
Hello. Everyone has woken up, dirt in their mouths. So, I want to do a very quick round of bookkeeping. Tyler, your generation is 10. Eric, where it says generation on your sheet, please write down 12. Okay. Steve, write down 10. Harry, also write down 10. Yay. Ever, please write down 11. Jared, please write down 8. Okay. Do, do, do the players get to know what this means? This is your generation. Eighth? Oh, Wait, Lord. we have fucking eighth gen here? Oh no. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the lower the number, the more power you get. Yep. Oh, really? <laughs> so I was, That's I scary as back. fuck. Oh. <laughs> Yay. <All right>. Okay. <laughs> I was Everyone not got their generation that. down? Uh huh. Yep. Okay. So. You have all woken up with dirt in your mouth. And it might be more accurate to describe it as mud. Because what has happened in the ensuing hours is that all of your bodily fluids, all of the cerebrospinal fluid, all of the remaining blood in your system, all of your saliva, your digestive fluids, they've all come out of your body. Anything that was in there is no longer. This is, as you might imagine, incredibly painful. Mm. And all you are experiencing right now is a tremendous, overwhelming hunger. And you must get to the surface. So I would like everybody to give me a strength plus brawl check or athletics. That's so bad. <laughs> yes, same. I got one dice. Um, well, you see, what had happened was... Two successes, so not actually terrible, considering that, like, I, I think I have two dice in that skill. How do I roll... six? I got a question. How do I roll on this sheet? Uh, Click the yeah. dots, uh, and then you have the, the big D <laughs> on the tray. <laughs> Uh, where the buttons usually go. Oh, go okay, cool. so It's the D, is the die roll, you click that. Gotcha, And tens, tens double, Rachel? Uh, yes, tens do double. And what is a success? Five successes. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a success is six. It will always be six unless I specify otherwise. Ah, alright. thought I was hot shit for that, too. I'm botched. I got I a negative know. one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing somebody tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, other than, uh, Drew, did everybody get a success? Mm-hmm. Okay. I so, did not. Sam, so you did not get any successes? Correct. Okay. So, uh, Sam is just like, huh, what? Paw, paw, paw. Oh, hey, moonlight, cool. <laughs> Uh, I could also point out, Rachel, that Drew didn't just fail. That's a botch. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. All right. So, the rest of you sort of, or the rest of you except Billy and Drew, uh, managed to, like, rush dirt away. And you can tell that you've been buried. Uh, fortunately, not face down. You've been buried face up, and this is odd. And you you're start clawing judge. your way. I'm sorry? I was talking to Nora. I was saying, you're that judge. Wait, if I... Oh, you're there. still... You're oh, still oh I'm still underground. Okay. Then I'll, I'll, I'll save the... Yes. Okay. Uh, Sam is the only person who has freed themselves. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so... Go ahead and give me another round of rolls, please. Same dice pool. Oh. Oh, God. Three. Hmm. Ten and a six. Hmm. 
Four for Sam. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sam, you no longer have to roll. You you are standing up, and you look over, and you see, you know, all of the shallow graves moving. Some not moving. Uh, as these <laughs> newly minted canites attempt to dig their way out of their own graves. I got one. Okay. So, Prue, you're like, what the fuck is going on? So... Uh, Eric also rolled a botch. Yeah, <laughs> super botch. Like the worst one than than Dimitri. <laughs> okay. Uh, neat. So <laughs> both of you, as you you are confused and you are in pain and you have no idea what's going on. Uh, you just have this experience experience of anger like you've been angry before but never like this it is like the anger is taking over both of you uh and so sam what you see are two frenzied new embraces coming out of the dirt while the rest of the vampires uh manage to keep their keel while breaking the surface uh, so at this moment, everyone is still pretty distracted, right? I assume. Yes. So there are other uh, Sabat just hanging out, watching, seeing how it goes. Um. Of the two that are seem to be flying into frenzy, what are the physical descriptions? Uh. Yeah, so go ahead and give me a physical description of Dimitri, please. Hmm. Um, really tall guy. He's got, you know, long, longish beard, uh, wearing kind of drabby street clothes, uh, hoodie, uh, somewhat unwell kempt. <laughs> um, he has like a wild look in his eyes sometimes. He's talking about the, but um, sort of nondescript. He's been living on the streets for a while, so. Okay, uh, and Jared, what is Drew wearing right now? So I'm going to assume that it's going to be um, the same clothes that he basically got fit in. So basically, fairly casual, um, considering that. Um, so he did, he does have a tie. His tie's probably been ripped off by now, though. But he's kind of in a white button-down shirt that probably has some ripped thing, ripped uh, buttons now, and uh, some khakis. Okay, so... Right, but uh, what do you look like? Height, weight, eye color, hair color, build? So, the reason that I asked only for a description of clothes, so, Jared... If Astral will let you, please remove the any dots of appearance you have. If you put any dots in appearance during character creation, you can put them somewhere else. Uh, Ooh, the oh. one free dot that you get goes away. You can never buy appearance Ooh. ever again. Uh, so, Ew. Sam, you see a living corpse dressed mm. as Drew describes. What's the height and weight of said living corpse and height and weight of said other guy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> six one, six two, two hundred mm -hmm. pounds. What about Drew? Harry. Oh, uh, Drew. Height and weight. I would say 170, 180. Uh he's gonna be five nine, five six. No, five nine, almost six foot. Yeah, All we're right, gonna so... shave like forty pounds off of that because you are now uh, extremely <laughs> gaunt. Okay, so 130 pounds. Um, wow. In that case, Dimitri, I don't know his name yet, but to, so people know who I'm talking about, I will turn away from the people watching us and grab him and turn him away from the, pe like the people pulling themselves out of the ground and look you dead in the eye and say, calm, we'll get through this. Calm yourself. 
Okay, let's uh, go ahead and give me a willpower roll, please. And your difficulty for this will be nine. And this is me, correct? No. No, I'm not doing it to you. I'm doing it to Dimitri. Oh. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm calm. I, I, I'm cool. Oh, no. Hold, hold on, know? hold on. Four successes, Rachel. The dice are loving me tonight. Okay. <laughs> God damn. Do I just click willpower? Is that how this one works? Yeah. Uh, wait. No, you can't. Oh, apparently so. No, yeah, I got yeah. Three just click the ones. blue. Right. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> oh god! Wow. The oh, legend god. continues. <laughs> yeah. So. There is some part of you that understands this feeling, Dimitri, and you know that there's something very dangerous going on right here, but you do calm down. I'm calm. <clears throat> <laughs> It's good, uh, because whatever is happening to us, if we don't work together, I feel this will end poorly. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I'm not going to fake the accent, but I do have a very hard-to-place accent. It's somewhere between Spanish, like from Spain, and uh, Iranian. Mm. For my physical description, I'm about six feet tall. Mm. I am jacked like Thor. <laughs> and uh, I am very uh, dark-complected. Very black hair and uh, gunmetal gray eyes. Okay, and so through you feel this anger take over, and it's in the driver's seat now. And there's some part of you that is still through that is wondering, like, holy shit, what's happening? Uh, it's almost like you're on drugs. Uh, that's the best way you have to describe it. Only the drug here is rage. Uh, and so, as angry as you are, you manage to break past the surface of the dirt. You're just growling, almost foaming at the mouth. Uh, give me a self-control check, please. Self-control. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. I'm gonna spend... Can I spend some willpower on this? Uh, have you already made the roll? No. Okay, yes. Uh... Willpower can be spent, you must declare ahead of time. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's not you, Steve. I hit the wrong button. Stand by. <laughs> How do I add willpower to the roll on this sheet? Uh, that I am unclear on. Like spend willpower. There's a button above your willpower. Okay, spend. Oh, okay, gotcha. I see it. Thank you. So I get three die. Hell yeah. Ah, three successes. Nice. Wow. Okay. So, in that case, I will give you a choice. Uh, you emerge from the dirt, driven by this rage and this hunger, but you manage to sort of reassert control over the driver's seat. But the hunger remains. And you see a group of people. Um, and uh, most of them look homeless. Uh, Dimitri probably recognizes a few. Uh, and you know there's food over there. And so I will give you the choice if you want to continue riding the wave and go look for food, or if you just want to... Nope, I'm cool, everything's cool. My character would be logical about it, so he would probably stay. I would listen to bitch. I would listen to Sam and try to maintain my calm. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I would try to listen to what Sam said and try to remain calm and try to maintain control. 
Okay, yeah, you you find yourself sort of coming down from your high. Uh, and so, Brew, what, what choice do you want to make? I'm probably going to... Mm. He would definitely stay. Okay. For right now, anyways, until he knew what he was in, and he, he has no clue what's going on, so... All right, and so you're like, okay, I got this. And you look down at your hands and, like, all the rest of your body, and you realize you look, you look like one of the month-old bodies that you are, that you have worked on before. What's going on? Why do I... He, he starts freaking out. I look like what I... I look like... Am I dead? And he's gonna try scratching himself because if he can feel pain, then he's alive. And hey. he's gonna try scratching himself. So you... You scratch yourself and you break the skin, but you do not bleed. And please give me a perception awareness roll, difficulty five. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't do that. No, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a little power on this. Roll that. Uh, five successes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No. So, <laughs> what happens is you look up and you see that you are in what looks like a ruined mansion, essentially. And it's extremely ruined because you can also see, and you don't know how you can see it, but you can see the house that used to be here that burned down. And you can see people walking through the rooms completely oblivious to what's going on right now. And somehow you know that they are dead and that you are looking at ghosts. So on your character sheet, write down necromancy, sepulcher path, one dot. Mm -hmm. And what was the second word? Sepulcher path. Can you spell that? S E P U O C H R E. Okay, got it. And you uh, are staring into the Shadowlands, the lands of the dead. Fuck. Can I uh, try to touch one of them? Uh, yeah. Uh, you just, you go right through. He starts thinking to himself, I must be dead. I must have passed on to the spirit realm. Uh, and so the rest of you who have uh, brought yourself up from out of the dirt, you see this going on. But almost assuredly, you have uh, your own personal feelings going on because all of you can tell you do not have a heartbeat. And you try breathing and it no longer feels like breathing. Because you know how like when you hold your breath for a long time and then you finally get to breathe and that feels really, really good. There's none of that anymore. Hmm. You're that judge, aren't you? If I'm with you, wait. If I ended up buried next to you, who did I piss off? Oh my god. I must have got the wrong guy. I pay my dues. I'm well, I got a question. Are we in the same I'm I in the same place as everybody else? Yes, you are. Okay. You you are all pretty much buried very close together. Uh and there are other people uh going through this same thing. You see other people clawing their way out of the dirt and like freaking out, oh my god, what has happened to me? 
uh, a couple people are like on their knees, you know, praying like, oh dear lord, uh, whatever I did, please forgive me. Uh, there is one like punk kid with like pentacles and spikes and black leather everywhere being like, this is the best night of my life. <laughs> God. <laughs> What the, what, what the fuck is this? What? Oh. I think we're dead. No, I think I, we're, the... we are dead. Uh, how are we walking, though? I, I think we are walking dead. Something like that. Uh, the, uh, does, do we have the fangs out, or like... Is that uh, so, or no? you think about that, and as soon as you think about it, your fangs extend. Oh. Huh. Oh, shit. What, so this is some fucking sick, twisted folklore tale? Like... With Strigoi? Oh, you never heard of Strigoi? This only happens in the fu in the fucking books, man. Duh, because it is real, apparently. Mm -hmm. Someone's playing a trick on me. Someone's punking me. No, this is what... This is what's happening. I'm dead. Very elaborate. Uh, I'm just a spirit in this world trying to figure out to go to to go to heaven somewhere or how yeah. I have no fucking clue. But it seems I'm a pretty uh, corporeal so, to me. So only Drew can sense this, but one of the ghosts just sort of leans back on a wall that is no longer there and be like, <laughs> "I love this part." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you... <laughs> What's all that about? Wh what part? Oh, holy shit! He can hear me. To be some kind of joke or something. This is not no, cool. The, the, I think the dirt has done something to this one. He's not all right in the head. Is there anyone else hungry? Yeah, starving. Uh... So, at this moment, uh, what happens is all of your attention is drawn towards a woman. So, what's happening is imagine a really nice mansion that no one has actually met, bothered to repair for like 40 years. And so you have a nice open foyer living room. Uh, and then leading up there is stairs and a nice balcony across the staircase. All of you are in this dirt covered foyer. Like someone has ripped out all the flooring and now it's just dirt. Uh, and you look up and uh, you see a very well-dressed, very attractive woman. Nora recognizes her. Uh, and there is a very brief moment of eye contact. And then just a little shake of the head, like... And you have enough politics to know that means, like, don't blow your cover. So I won't even make you roll for that one. Uh, you also see just, uh, a very strange collection of other people. Uh, you see what looks like uh, a teenager, like a teenage girl. Uh, but she's like dressed from like 1970s. That's what her hair and her style is like. But looking at her eyes, you know, like, oh, this woman is a total predator. And there's uh, another woman. She's very tall. Uh, she's got a headscarf on and a giant fuck off sniper rifle strapped to her back and she looks like she knows how to use it Jesus. and there are various other equally strange equally horrifying people Dimitri you see that there's a group of uh, one of these people they are giving you the stink eye and like, you see one of them like lean over, whisper to someone else, point at you, and then someone else is like... Well, shit, um, I'm uh, feeling very hungry right now, guys. I'm gonna go get some food. Uh, if anyone wants some uh, sh uh, shit noodle or something? Okay, bye. <laughs> oh. Uh, you try to leave and you realize there there are no exits to this place, just the staircase. Uh, and you remember, okay, that one guy bit me and then he died. <laughs> ah. So, 
Uh, the woman, known only to Nora and vaguely at that, draws all of your attention. You're not even sure how she does it, but she is the only thing in this room you want to look at. Praise Cain, she shouts. You are all blessed enough to receive the Dark Father's gift and to be drafted as foot soldiers in the unholiest of crusades. Tonight, you will deal your first blow as such soldiers. There is a blight in the city and you must take it. The survivors will be richly rewarded and I do not expect all of you to survive. Only the strongest among you. Praise Cain! So He's this some kind of like cult yes. thing? What is this? <laughs> Shut up! Who is, the fuck yes, praise Cain! I like you, you're a quick study. Is Billy out of their grave by now? Yes. And, yes. Okay, so Billy's just standing there quizzically unless this woman has a way to communicate mentally. Uh, she does not. Bill Billy will sign... What say? What'd you say? Uh, so no really, uh, pays attention to what Billy is doing. Unless any of the PCs, uh, look over and see the sign language. I do, but I don't react to it. Okay. Um... Yeah, I... I'd like to if that's possible. I just, like, I assume I've actually probably dealt with... What did you say? Okay. What did you say? <laughs> uh, and so the, the woman looks like... What is your name? She signs Billy. Or Billy. And so she looks at you and she look like, and you see like she realizes something. And she looks to one of the groups of like, the very odd people and like, Astrid again, really? <laughs> Somebody put them. Can someone translate? Anyone? I'm Billy. Nice to meet you, Billy. Um. Hmm. Look, this is really cool and all, but I've got work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, and I am I not feeling very well. Noticeably. <laughs> I look over and I'm like, I don't think you're going to work. I, I step sniper up behind. Rifle told me that, but it's worth a shot, anyways. I step I, up behind Justinian. I take your left hand. I put it on your right wrist. I wait for it. <laughs> you do not have a pulse. Yeah, I need to go to the hospital right now. Uh, <laughs> um, Godspeed. Dude, no one here has a pulse. What the fuck is this? What is going on? I. <sighs> you got big bad Strigoi. You don't have stories about them here? How do you know this Ew. is that? My grandma Bushka used to tell me all the time about the Strigoi. Where are you from? Romania, you don't know? I mean, I know where Romania is. It's Street and Elm, what about you? <laughs> That's what I want Eric to say. Can I go home now? <laughs> Can I go home now? Oh, you and me both. Can I go home no. now? Can no. I go home now? No. <laughs> you are all blessed. You have all been given. Tremendous gifts. I will be close to the point. There is a train coming into the city later tonight. In the very last car on this train is a great enemy of ours. Seize that car and that car only. Murder everyone in sight. And so all of you. You have all experienced what it is like to be a normal person and to be told, go kill that guy. 
And the idea of, like, murdering a total stranger, like, that is inimical to every thing that people are taught about how to be a good person in society. But no matter how you react to, like, oh, I gotta, I don't want to kill anyone, like, there is a, there is a part of you that you feel, yes, murder, murder is good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's murder. terrifying. Um, oh, you have to kill everybody? Why do we have to kill these people? Because they are now your enemies. They all ask Shit. those questions. I only ask weapons. And some will be provided. <laughs> Excellent. They are. Imagine this say trial by fire. Well, I'm already dead anyways. I'm just maybe this is maybe this is a test for me to get into heaven or something. If they are I'll laugh out loud again. If they are our enemy, who are we? I'm are... hungry. Oh. Uh will someone take the silent one? And so Billy, as you say, I'm hungry. So have has Billy ever spoken before? Yes, uh, Billy is able to use ecolalia, which is the parroting and repeating of sentences that they've heard before, or um, bits of songs. Okay, and so y you're playing with your phone, and you're kind of frustrated because it's taking a while, and then your voice manifests, and you're not speaking, but it just manifests, and says, I'm hungry. So, on your sheet, where it says Disciplines, <laughs> go ahead and write down Melpomene, one dot, and your clan is Child of Discord, or Child of Cacophony. How do you- how do you spell Meltonomy? I'll put that in the chat. Okay. As a word I've never heard before, and that is very rare for me. <laughs> uh, I have never heard it. Oh. Of context of this game. Pardon. There you go. Oh, okay. It looks Greek. Uh, and Jared, go ahead and where it says clan, it's... write down Cappadocian. Ooh, okay. And, uh, for everyone who knows, uh, Vampire Lore, yes, I'm being very deliberate. Fru is a Cappadocian. Interesting. Yeah, and so, Billy, you do the whole thing, and you hear your voice say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Okay, okay, I, I can help with that. You come with me, yes? Then we keep kill people on train. Uh, what, if you what require you... more immediate sustenance, and I strongly recommend it, uh, and she points to the collection of very human people. Oh no, I was talking about uh, tacos. Fish tacos down the street? I know a great place. I don't recommend that. Oh, and like, people? and so you, you think about tacos, and like it's the same thing that happens when you think about food, and so you think about the flavor and the texture. Like, oh yeah, that'd be really good with some pico de gallo, and your stomach just turns. Like, it would be nausea, except you're not really capable of feeling nausea anymore. Just this, like, revulsion. Like, oh, no, that's that's not food. And then you look back over at the collection of people, like, oh, food. I, uh, food. look at the lady questioningly, like, just, just take one and do something? Oh, uh, let instinct guide you. I do. 
with no remorse, no hesitation. Billy's okay. just gonna do the death. Look directly at this woman okay. and go. Uh, vampire. Vampire. Uh, so Sam, your blood pool is full. Thank you. <laughs> I'm um, going to do by example, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna okay. like watch my people next to me doing it, and be like, and like literally copy. I may do it really awkwardly and shit, but. <laughs> yeah, so it's awkward to begin with because this this feels weird. This is not like anything you've ever done before. And so, but like as you smell their skin and their sweat and you can hear the beating of their heart and you just, you do what she says. You let instinct take over and you bite and you drink you drink and as a medical professional you know what happens when someone loses too much blood and people can't actually lose that much and still be healthy and you can tell that the heartbeat starts getting a little weaker and a little weaker do you want to continue yeah okay uh you continue drinking and then at a certain point there is nothing left to drink and you see the person so there's the person in your arms and then you you look up and you see a different version of that same person and it looks like they're caught up in this uh almost like a mystical envelope like they're sealed in it and oh shit you just killed that person you just killed that person and made them into a ghost okay. uh, and These you can see them just sort of like clawing at what's happening to them and so go how, what's your humanity uh my humanity yes please is five okay Give me a humanity check. Mm. Nope. Uh, four. That. Nice. Okay. You realize that you've taken a life. Okay. Yeah. Hold I. No, the way he thinks about it is to him, these spirits are all dead. He's the cho to him, he's like I'm the chosen one. If I kill these spirits, they'll ascend. <laughs> and he starts laughing. Yeah, but you just turned someone into a ghost. Who was alive five minutes ago and now they're not. Yeah, he... What? What's your humanity at? Just curious. Five. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the lady and I say, I think I'm going to like working for you. <laughs> All right. Everyone else watching, how do you respond? Because <sighs> there's two dead bodies now. And you know how, like, you haven't eaten in a while? And anything cooking smells really good? That's what's going on right now. I think uh, Dimitri would see uh, Billy and feel a pang of uh, sympathy. So he would go over and uh, grab her hand lightly and like, like the man said, we have to be calm now to get through this. We go together, okay? I go with you. Mm-hmm. Duh. Okay. You 
walks he walks over to the crowd and he he the, he doesn't he's very awkward obviously and like he's just can you just please not look at me when I do this okay just look over there yeah just, just, okay I'm gonna just like okay like that uh-huh. and <laughs> he'll go for a bite and he before he does it he's just like I'm I'm very sorry <laughs> so is this a is this a guy that Dimitri is eating or a girl. Or non-binary pal. Uh, Dimitri, you can pick whatever prey suits you. It wouldn't matter to him, really. You feel bad regardless. One in the front. <laughs> okay. And same thing is that as you bite down and as you start drinking. Uh, you do also sense that the heartbeat is weakening. And you know that if you keep on, this person will die. He tries to resist and let him go. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me, uh, self-control, please. Yeah. Uh, that would be three dots. So that's three dice at difficulty six. Uh, so, uh, small edit, uh, this is a difficulty eight roll. Wait, nope, nope, oh. I'm at the wrong thing. This is difficulty six. Ah, okay. I will, uh, I'll spend a willpower. Okay. There's a good and... point, though, for anyone who hasn't figured it out in the very top right of the sheet in Astral is a button to change to DC. <laughs> Pulling meat dice this time. <laughs> Those are the last two major bunches. All right, I rolled one success with an eight, so that's two. Okay, that's all you need. Uh, and so you managed to tear yourself away. Uh, so uh, through your blood pool is full, and I will let you all know what your generational blood pools are uh, at the end of the game. So, Dimitri, you gain three blood points. All right. How are the rest of you feeling, Nora, Justinian, Billy? Well, since Billy's next to Dimitri, I'm gonna, well, assuming he bit into a guy, Billy's just gonna look over, and the first thing that pops into their head, cause Earl had to die, na 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 na. <laughs> um, okay. Which is a song that she, they heard, um, and that's just that. That's how ukulele works. Is like you you see something and it reminds you of something, and you'll bust out with the something, whether or not it's appropriate. So Billy looks around and picks the healthiest looking person. Okay. Uh. You That's look so around weird. and you realize these people were picked because they would not be missed. But yeah, you you can pick someone who looks relatively okay. Then probably cleanest looking because Billy does not like dirtiness. Dirt is one thing, dirtiness is another. Okay. So they'll go over and feed on that person. Okay. Uh, yeah, so instinct takes over. It's awkward at first, but then it's like, oh, this is uh, ambrosia, this is nectar, this is the most delicious thing you've ever had. And that that part of you, inside you, the one who was like, yes, murder, let's murder, really wants you to kill this person. Just drink them dry. So do you give in or do you resist? Am I full feeling? So that'll make a difference. For Billy. No. Oh, well, if I'm not full, I'll keep going. But if I'm full, I will stop. Okay. Uh, I'll attempt to anyway. Yeah, so... Take ten blood points. And uh, you look up and you realize... 
Oh shit, I just killed someone. So go ahead and give me a humanity roll for you. Oh god. Um, while I roll, Billy's gonna be like, They're dead. They're dead. I've killed them. Um, self control plus conscience. Uh, there should be a spot on your sheet for humanity specifically. Oh, oh, I found it. So roll a number of dice equal to your humanity. And the difficulty here is eight. Oh, I. It was at difficulty six. Let me fix that. Uh, if you already rolled, we can just take the roll. Oh, I forbid. Okay. Two successes. Okay. Yeah, so same thing. You have just taken a life. Probably the first person you ever killed. And Billy will just like stop voicing anything and just just be like dead, 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 and and back away, um, fidgeting with their hands and like kind of twitching their head a bit, and just back away. Okay. Nora, Justinian. I'll approach and I'll look up and see all the, the onlookers, I guess you could call them. And I'll tell them all of you are on borrowed time because of this. And then I'll drink. Okay. And so, Harry, or rather, Justinian. What happens to you is... Like... So, someone just, like, throws themselves in front of you. On their knees. And they are... Talking, uh... Much, you know, faster than you can really, uh, understand. But, you know, it's it, they're basically begging you for mercy. Like, please, like, just, I have a family, I have children, uh, I want to live, please don't kill me, I'll do anything. Sorry. I can promise you I'll get them back, but, I mean, those fuckers. Other than that, that's all I can do. And then I'll drink. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, same thing. Uh, th this new entity within you wants you to consume everything that you can. I'll do uh, it. Do you try and break it off? Do you nope. keep going? Do you give in? I'm in 100%. Okay. For a penny and so, for a pound at this point. Alright, so gain that 10 blood points. And what is your humanity? My humanity is a spicy seven or wait no eight okay yeah go ahead and give me a humanity roll okay 8d10 let's see it okay five successes oh no okay. six successes so and the one thing... one does that subtract uh yes one would subtract okay so then five so, the thing with humanity rolls is that when you succeed, you feel it. Mm. And so, when you succeed at a humanity roll, you retain your humanity. You retain knowledge of everything that you have done. Like, oh, should I have killed someone? It is when you lose your humanity goes down by one, but you feel okay about it. You feel like you can justify mm -hmm. what happened and you don't really care. So, Harry, at five successes, you feel awful. Oh, Jesus Christ, what have I done? <laughs> Interesting. And... Okay. 
give me two seconds. All right. So what happens to you, Harry, <laughs> is that as you are drinking, and this is probably what justifies those five successes, you gain a supernatural sense of how close your target is to death. Like, more even than Drew with his medical knowledge. Like, you have a sixth sense. Oh, this person is dying and I'm killing them. So, oh, under shit. disciplines. Yep. Please write down Valerian one dot. Oh, boy. Oh, the bandana. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, and you might as well go ahead and write down Salubri for your clan. Yep. Uh. Anti tribu or just Salubri? Uh, warrior Salubri. Okay. <laughs> okay, and if I were to spend my five dots of freebies for an extra discipline, how would that work? Is that possible? Uh, so what you can do is you can spend uh, your freebie dots for the additional discipline merit. Mm -hmm. And so that would give you, basically you would have four in-plan disciplines. Yeah. Uh, I will let you pick anything except Obeya. Okay. I'll take Go vicissitude. Ahead, take uh, within reason, you probably can't get any of the clan uh, proprietary ones. Oh, okay, so like vicissitude. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh... So you you go ahead and think about that. I well, will. The yeah. The camera will shift to Nora. So, Nora is watching all of this very intently. She is obviously internally freaking out, not like, um, you know, she's not the super cold, like, you know, ultra, ultra badass, but it's like, she's trying to keep that external kind of, cool, just like, just trying to observe. She's remembering the conversation from the motel. Um, so she is watching everything and she's trying to take as many notes mentally as possible. So she looks at Drew, um, just makes a note, just like, enjoyed that, drank deep, seemed to, seemed to come away into that. Dimitri, looking at Dimitri, almost ashamed, asked people to turn away, broke away. Billy couldn't really control themselves and then was shocked at it. And then looks at just uh, Justinian, just like, mm, fiery temper. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, airs, towards airs towards vendettas. He, you know. Like that could be interesting, and then seemed to seem to drink deeply, and immediately felt terrible. So highly conflicted, many different things playing off inside of him. Interesting. Yeah, and so at some point you just sort of like glance up, like almost like your eyes are drawn towards this woman, and you can mm. tell she is really good at not looking like she's watching you but she's watching. Mm. You're being evaluated. Okay. <sighs> Would they, did they tell us anything specifically about drinking? I apologize, that was, this started, like, what was their instructions other than go to the train? Like... Uh, so currently the instructions are to let instinct take over with regard to the poor unfortunate souls that they have rounded up for your dinner. Okay. <gasps> Interesting. Okay. okay. She, so what had happened was Billy said, hungry, 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 and she said, sate yourself before you leave, and I said, yeah. how do, and they said, just no. do. I, rem I remember now. Okay, I was trying to remember where, how you got to the feeding. And yeah, she, so the instruction were let instinct take over. That's what she's looking for, it seems like. So 
if her instructions were letting instinct take over, you know, marking who broke away, who did what, Billy looked for someone specific as well. Nora makes a note, like, um, Billy, like, chose someone. And I'll just kind of walk over and look but not look up at the person watching and let instinct take over. I'll give them what they want to see. Okay. Uh, same thing that happened to Justinian is that by this point, all the people who are still alive have figured out, you know, what's going on. And the person that you select is just begging and screaming, no, like, please don't kill me. I have a life. Uh, I won't tell anyone. Just please let me go. Thanks for the follow, Anagonius, and the compliments. I'll just look at him. Uh, I am sorry. I don't know what led you to this moment. But this is your sentence. And I will drink. Okay. And so they they struggle against you and you can feel that. Uh, but you feel like, yeah, normally if if this was like a one-on-one, -on -one, they'd probably win. Oh, yeah. But you feel this incredible strength flow through you. So uh, on your sheet, please write down potence, one dot. That's for discipline? Uh-huh. Uh, and because it's probably pretty easy to figure out right now, your clan is La Sombra. Mm. And, uh, same question. Do you... Do you grab someone? Do you just let instinct take over, drain them dry? I let instinct take over. If that's what her instructions were, that's what I do. Okay. Uh, take ten blood points and give me a humanity check. Four successes. Result is four, so... Okay. Yeah, you realize these orders were to kill people and that is what you can look forward to for who knows how long I'll just that drop that person and just kind of like So, all of you stand up, blood coming from your mouth, staining your clothes even more than they've already been stained, and you look around and, you know, corpses are piling up, because again, you are not the only people buried here tonight. There are other people in your exact situation, they are screaming, they are crying, uh, some of them are in frenzy, and you realize nothing will ever be the same in your life again. Mm -hmm. and that is where we will end tonight. Oh, I want to go to the train. I want to go to the choo-choo. <laughs> That'll be next week. All right. Well Thank you all so much for playing. I hope you enjoyed this initial foray into the world of darkness and the three-front war for Los Angeles. Uh, we are Vorpal Tales, and we're here every day of the week delivering terrifying tales and awesome adventures. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Treya, and at warpletales.com. And catch our two podcasts in your favorite podcatcher. Your support, as always, is gratefully appreciated. A beloved Shovelheads, please tell our audience when they can next see your wonderful face through the intertubes. Hey there, I've been Eric. Uh, I played Dimitri tonight. Uh, you'll catch me here tomorrow for Dune. Hey everybody, I have been Billy. You can find me all over the internet 
as Changeling Ever, and that is because I am the Ever forever, and you can find me playing Dune tomorrow night under the excellent storyteller, Eric. And, uh, yeah, that's gonna be two nights in a row of epic storytellers, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Don't shake your head, it's true, don't do that. I'll smack both of you if you Looking shake your you, head with that compliment. Eric, <laughs> I'm gonna come to Texas and smack you upside the head. <laughs> yes, um, that's me. I am I now. Yes, please. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm so bad at remembering the order. I'm gonna write it on my hand next time. Hi, I'm Harry. You can find me next here on Wednesday playing Fallout, where I play the luckiest person in the universe, who's bad at everything, but mysterious Florida man appears and <laughs> shoots the people he needs to shoot every once in a while. It's real weird. Don't know how it works. Uh, my friends think I'm crazy, but tune in, because it's fucking nuts, and it's wonderful. Um, this was a lot of fun. Also, listen to the Saratoga by Night podcast. We'll be coming back sooner than you know. I'm already planning to... Uh, I'm already I'm going to contact the cast tonight, and we'll get recording soon. So, yeah, that's that. On to the next. Hello. <laughs> My name is Jared. You can find me at the Real Life Jared um, on the internet. And today I played Drew, uh, as you can tell, the Cappadocian. I don't know how that's gonna ha how the, that's not. Yeah, he's gonna leave a lot of dead bodies. But anyways, it's um, plan. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking nuts. But I had a lot of fun. Next time you can see me is on the Sunday guy. You go, you're gonna find me and. Uh, Unknown Armies next Sunday. So, by the way, uh, our Mr. Fabulous uh, GM, Eric, does that one too. So if you want to see him then, right there. Okay, hello everybody. I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. Tonight I played the Honorable Nora Cannon. And uh, next, you are formerly honorable, I guess. Um, and you uh, can find me next on Tuesday uh, playing episode two of the uh, two hitter um, Voodoo on the Bayou with Patty Shakes. You will also find me on Wednesday playing Fallout with Harry. And uh, Bonesaw doesn't think you're crazy, uh, but he does, he did just get certified in. Uh, sick tree to uh, help you out. Yeah, if Bonesaw thinks that you're sane, you should probably <laughs> go and see an actual licensed professional. <laughs> and I'm Elder Jekyll's online. You can find me all over the place at Four Tales, but this week I will draw your attention to the finale of Gawain's amazing three part call Cthulhu story Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And I was muted. Thank you, everyone. I have been your humble storyteller. My name is Rachel. Uh, as people have already mentioned, you can find me tomorrow night playing Dune with Eric, who will uh, no doubt enjoy the chance to get back <laughs> at what I have inflicted on his character. Uh, you can also find me. Uh, I will also be on Friday. Uh, a game that I contributed to. We're currently having our Kickstarter going. It is more of the cinematic universal role-playing game. And I will be running the finale of our three-part showcase, Punching Nazis. Guess what you get to do? <laughs> Although some of them might be werewolves. So let's punch <laughs> some Nazi werewolves. Or some necromancer werewolves. Uh, it'll be great. That'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern. And I look forward to seeing you all next week for that. But... Before we say goodbye forever, we've got one more thing. Uh, this is for, as Tyler likes to say, our Ride or Die viewers uh, cast. Please vote for whoever uh, impressed you, entertained you, delighted you. Also, our audience may vote uh, until the end of the reel. And votes are good for bonus willpower, so everybody can use them uh, when in the clutch for that thing that you just really want to get done. So, let the voting commence. 
Uh, I was impressed with everybody's performance, as always, because we have a great cast. But I, I, the line that got me in the very beginning was when Jared's character is like, Hi, I'm Drew. I work with dead people. I killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hmm, this is a hard one. Everyone was really fucking good. Uh, yeah, they were. Yeah. I'm gonna give it to Nora. Um, I think you all did really well. I just really liked the Nora's character concept. I think the okay. idea of the disgraced judge is fucking brilliant. And I can't wait to play more of it. Oh, thank you. So, I am going to give mine to... Um, Eric, for that Russian accent, that just cracks me up. Romanian. Romanian accent. I'm sorry. My <laughs> deepest and humblest apologies. No one's a lick. Uh, okay, yeah, um, uh, man, I don't even know, um, I, I, I want to give the shout out to Eric for the accent and also for Jared for that phone call home to the wife where he's just like, yeah, your husband's shot, they be dead, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, <laughs> um, yeah, that was good. I they have I, a procedure for this. Right? They do, actually. <laughs> they, I know. But you thought he was being like, in his mind, he's like, Ugh. oh my god. No, it's, it's <laughs> fine. It, it, it was meant to be an encounter that would throw you off guard. I know. Um, but I am going to give it to um, Harry slash Justinian for, do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like... No. <laughs> it's always worth a try. <laughs> so, if a guy confronts you with two swords in an alleyway, you're pretty much fucked. <laughs> so it's worth a shot. Yeah. Mine goes specifically to Eric for, that's disgusting. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this was a lot of fun. I wish I could run for much, much longer. Unfortunately, we only have so much time left. But, fear not, for the stories will not end, for we are about to raid. Uh, hold on tight, we are going to visit Free League Publishing. They are a publisher of games that you can find on this channel as well. And with that, good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And praise Kane. <laughs> praise Kane. Praise Kane. Ha, ha, ha.